Keir Starmer has launched a crackdown uh, in relation to the right, in response to the riots, not just on violence, which is fine by <laughs> anyone here, um, but also on speech, on what people say online, on disinformation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of nascent at the moment, but it's certainly very concerning. So alongside, as you say, the completely understandable desire to swiftly deal with the violent criminals and to get them locked up, there is this instantly it becomes a discussion about social media. Mm. I mean, we know this in, you know, anything can happen. It becomes a discussion about social media, but there we go. Um, very alarming, not only calling on the social media platforms themselves to do more, um, which basically means to do more censorship, to do more moderation, <laughs> yeah. um, to kick off the people that um, they see sometimes quite rightly as undesirables, but that's already kind of in the offing. We've also seen um, the chief prosecutor give this interview, which has been out across the media, talking about how we have police officers or we have officials scouring the internet, looking for people who might be um, not just kind of posting their own forms of hate speech and incitement to hatred and violence, but even just if you're retweeting it, if you're reposting mm. it, um, then you could also be liable. So it's, cre it's creating this very concerning atmosphere. Um, and it's one of those things where, first and foremost, it's quite clear that any kind of purge of social media or any kind of crusade that's whipped up around online speech is never going to stop at the truly hateful, inciting stuff that they claim that it's about. Um, even without getting into the whole question of like trying to define hate speech is yeah. a fool's game anyway. But still, it's quite clear that it's going to become a much broader crusade. You're already seeing that with the demands that reform MPs be removed from parliament mm. or all sorts of different people are apparently being blamed. The Daily Mail is being blamed, all yeah. these kinds of things. Um, th that McCarthy atmosphere, you can clearly see this isn't just about purging what is neatly defined as, you know, beyond the pale speech on the internet. Um, and also it's it's just really striking, I think, that this is that, that, that this is always the reaction tells us two things. One of which these people really are terrified of freedom of speech. It's like yeah. their kind of root cause explanation for absolutely everything that goes on goes wrong in society. Like censorship is the only thing between civilization and barbarism as well as <laughs> these people concerned. And it's a it's a quite a terrifying worldview if you do care about those fundamental liberties. It's also a complete displacement activity. Yeah. Everyone can see this. Why is Keir Starmer having this huge row, even if it's few kind of, you know, through the media and through intermediaries with Elon Musk, when not only does he have a uh, ongoing riotous situation to deal with, but also it has exposed quite deep-seated problems in the country. Yeah, These people are, for whatever else, despicable, con condemnable, all the rest of it, also clearly a symptom of something else that's going wrong, even if they're not a legitimate response to it in any meaningful mm. sense. So it's always very easy, whether it's these riots, the murder of David Amos, anything horrendous that it actually requires a quite difficult and complicated discussion, you just blame it on the agitators or the social media companies. It's a cop-out as yeah. much as anything else. And I think we've seen that very clearly this week. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, some of the uh, sort of most prominent liberals calling for sort of Twitter or X to be completely shut down, GB News to be taken off the air, Farage kicked out of parliament. I mean, hashtag arrest Farage was trending for like most of last week as if yeah. he is somehow to blame just because he made some weird video sort of it, speculating about the, ki the Southport killer. It's honestly astonishing just the you know, ferocious, censorious instinct that you see in certain sections of the kind of media and political class. I just think, have you learned absolutely nothing? Even during COVID, the pandemic, when there was just so much censorship going on, if anything, that fueled the massive conspiracism that mm. um, ended up being unleashed as a result. I mean, this there's no evidence whatsoever that censoring speech, you know, as, as we all know, has um, any concrete effect in the way of dealing with the root causes of, of the problem. And then now we've obviously got this new boogeyman as well that's been thrown in, which is the you know, Russian you know, disinformation as well. Yeah. You know, it's like, th this is, you know, can't possibly be anything to do with, you know, some of the real problems going on in yeah. society. This has to be manipulated by Russia. Um, and, you know, everybody is essentially just being manipulated. And yeah. it's just, it is really just quite shocking. And then, you know, even just some of the, things that some of the rioters were saying, like stop the boats. You know, there's discussions now that the you know, Rishi Sunak is somehow responsible <laughs> for the, the stop the boat slogan, which is regardless of if you agree with it, that's an entirely legitimate kind yeah. of political um, disagreement to have. Yeah. So what we, we're really seeing just a um, 
complete narrowing and intense narrowing of any kind of discussion, anything that remotely questions um, many of the, the 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 liberal niceties that we've seen over the last few years. Definitely. I mean, I'm just sort of laughing at the image of these sort of uh, EDL type thugs hanging on every word of Rishi Sunak <laughs> yeah. and Swella Braverman <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> being whipped up into a frenzy. It's just, just complete nonsense. 